Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I want to share with you my second update for my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan. And believe me when I tell you, I am so excited for today's update because I have a lot of progress. I have been looking forward to sitting down and filming this video for quite some time. I have tons and tons of progress, lots of looks to share with you today. This project just super inspires me and just always makes me so excited and today is absolutely no exception. I feel like I'm going to be like smirking the entire video because I'm just so excited. I'm feeling really invigorated by this project at the moment as well. As you know, this project is inspired by my friend Alexi. Her details will be in the description box and in the end card of today's video. As well as in the description box, you will find all of my rules because I have interpreted this project um, in my own way, as many other creators do. I have my own set of rules and how I like to structure this project. So that will all be in the description box. I am so excited to talk about all the progress that I've made this past month, but I am going to kick it off actually with a bonus pan. I don't often share these because I don't often have bonus pans. I really fixate and focus on the eyeshadows that I'm working on in this project. However, this past month I've been pulling for this palette. This is the Catrice Basic Bay palette. I got this in PR in 2020 and I have been reaching for this kind of as a complementary palette to my pan those eyeshadows recently. And I did hit pan in one shade. The shade Squad right there, which is like a light kind of peachy brown shade. That shadow I have been incorporating into many, many looks over this past month. You'll see it very subtly or possibly not even recognize that it's in these looks, but it is incorporated into many looks that I'm going to share with you today. I've also been reaching into this palette for these like creamy tones and mostly the mattes actually throughout this past month, but I'm really happy to see a bonus pan, especially a pan in a palette that didn't have one otherwise. So this feels really good to see. And that is just a little bit of a insight to how successful this past month has been. So let's get on into all the progress that I have made. So I've been focusing on six shadows and I want to share with you the color story. I've swatched out all six of my focus shades. I originally started this project with five focus shadows and last month I decided I'm ready to roll in a hand selected sixth shadow and I'm really happy that I did decide to do that. It gave me a little bit more variety and it just really is a lot of fun to be kind of reaching for so many different types of shadows. As you can see, I have quite a mix of warm tones, colorful shades, cool tones, bright, bright metallics, more satin than matte shades. So it's quite a vast color story and I have been feeling extremely inspired by all of these shadows. Many of them have been in the project since the introduction. And yeah, let's just get on into all of the progress that I've made on each of these individual shades. The first one being this hot, bright magenta shadow. It comes from my Juvia's Place the Zulu palette and it is the eighth shade in that palette. In update number one I had reached for it seven times and then this past month I have reached for it 11 additional times bringing me up to 18 uses through this project pan and I'm really happy to report that through those 18 uses I was able to hit pan on it. I actually did hit pan on it in use number 16 and today I am wearing it just a little bit on the outer portion of my eyes just to kind of expand the pan and to tie it into today's look, get another use out of it. And then I did reach for it one additional time since hitting pan on it to try it again as a blush and honestly I have to report not the biggest fan of trying to make this work as a blush on me although I'm so happy that so many of you had recommended it because I love multi-purposing my makeup, you know that, but I just could not get this to work as a blush for my own, you know, heavy handedness and my own preferences as well. Um, but regardless, I've had so much fun reaching for this palette as a whole and this shade has definitely pulled me out of my comfort zone. I'm not usually that much into pinks, but over this past month, the way that I reached for this most often was I mixed it with the yellow shade right here. And so I got this beautiful, bright, peachy kind of color and I was able to wear it so much more 
through like mixing it in that way and I found it so much more wearable. So I have really enjoyed reaching for this palette over this past couple months since I rolled it into the Project Pan. And you know what? I am so happy to see that I have Pan in four of these nine shadows. I'd love to continue hitting Pan on some of the additional shades that don't have it yet, but for now I'm extremely happy with the state of this palette and I'm really happy to be saying that I'm gonna be rolling it out already as well. And the next focus shadow is this bright purple metallic shadow. It comes from my Juvia's Place The Masquerade Mini Palette, which is my oldest Juvia's Place palette. And I have not really found myself super inspired by this particular shadow. Last update, I had only reached for it four times, which I was really hoping to improve upon. And unfortunately this past month, I've only done the same. So I've reached for it a grand total of eight times through this project since the beginning of this project pan. And I wish that I could definitely improve upon that because unfortunately at this point, I have not yet hit pan on it. It is this shade right here. And you can see there is definitely usage. There's some disruptance on it. So I am happy to see that. I'm definitely happy that this palette is looking more worn, especially considering this is my oldest Juvia's Place palette. I think this coming month, I'd like to um, try to aim to reach for it at minimum five times so that I do approve, improve upon the number of uses but I don't foresee myself being able to really integrate it into looks more often than that because I just don't feel compelled by this purple shade. And I have noticed a little bit of a change in the formula as well. It used to be much more rich, creamy, and impactful. And in the swatch, um, I'm not sure that you can tell, but it does have a little bit more sheerness to it. It doesn't have as much rich, deep pigment as it used to have, and that's because it is getting older. Um, I have also noticed, and you'll see definitely in the progress shot, that there is quite a bit of hard pan starting to happen on this because I did use this as a liner. So I was spraying my brush and then dipping into it. I was using the Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray and I was dipping into this and then I created quite a bit of hard pan. I did try to remove it with tape and it doesn't seem to want to lift. Should I use a spoolie and try to lift it off? I feel like that could possibly lead me to being able to hit pan on it, but through removing the hard pan, if that makes sense. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm just gonna continue to try to work around what's on the exterior where, where the hard pan is, um, or quite possibly I might just wear this as a nail polish one more time and I may be able to hit pan on it through that. That does use quite a lot of product when I wear this as nail polish. So I don't know, uh, lots to say it seems, but not a lot of progress and not a lot of looks to share with this. I'm hoping that I either hit pan in the coming month or I reach for it five more times and then I may be like ready to just uh, move on from it even though I won't reach my 15 use threshold through five more uses. But we'll see what the next month has in store with that shadow, I am going to try to improve upon my progress and try to hit pan. That's the end goal with all of these shadows though. And then the next shade I have here is this beautiful, shimmery, light, dirty olive color. It's a truly unique, grungy, greeny gold, really great, almost neutral, almost colorful kind of shadow. And it is one of my Mob Beauty single shadows. Throughout the process of reaching for this, I have come to realize I do definitely need to build it up. It can be quite sheer, um, but I love the color. I really like this color. We know I'm big into greens. I'm big into grungy colors. And today I do not look like that person whatsoever, but that's the fun part about makeup is you can change up your vibe whenever. And, um, and truly, I have had so much fun reaching for this shade through this project pan. I'm so happy that it got rolled in in the introduction. Last update, I had reached for it a total of eight times, which I was really happy with that amount of usage in a singular month. And this past month, um, I actually reached for it exactly the same eight more times. So grand total of 16 uses in the project, and I was actually able to uh, hit a little bit of pan on it through that. So I do think because of the nature of this shadow being one that you kind of have to work to build up a little bit to get the impact that you're after, I did have to reach into this quite a lot in order to 
really get that smoky look that I wanted from it. And that's how I was really able to hit pan on it in those 16 uses. I personally really like a very pigmented, very rich, very impactful eyeshadow look. And some people do prefer a little bit more of a wash of color. And so, you know, the way that I use makeup may be different from yourself, but I was able to hit pan on it in those 16 uses. I had reached for it previously, although I wouldn't say that it looked overly disturbed prior to rolling into this project, but overall, I'm so happy with the experience that I had with this shadow, integrating it into so many looks with golds, with other greens, with bronzes and browns. I had so much fun with it. And of course, I'm gonna keep using it regardless of having hit pan on it, but it was really, really quite a treat. And I really did enjoy reaching for that shade specifically. Did I even tell you that the shade is called M48? I feel like I didn't, but anyways, Great shadow, really beautiful formula, and I love the customizability of the Mob Beauty palettes as well. I do recommend these, and I do wanna mention I did receive it in PR, so I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to have tried out this formula through that avenue as well. And then let's hop into the fourth shadow. This has been in the project since the introduction as well. All four of these top shades have actually been in the project since the introduction. And this one is a beautiful, bright, true gold shade. And that beautiful shadow comes from my Elf and J Kissa to the Rescue palette, which was a limited edition collaboration palette. But I am really happy that I have been focusing on it in this project pan. Last update, I had reached for it a grand total of 12 times, which was really great. That is something that I don't often get that many uses out of a shadow in a singular month but I was really happy to see that I was able to reach for it so much. And then this past month, it only took me five additional uses to be able to hit the pan. I hit a freaking pan on it. So a grand total of 17 uses in this project pan to hit pan on this shade. This is one that I was integrating into many a looks in many different ways throughout these past couple months. Sometimes I wore it all over the lid and I really built it up so there was high shine, high impact, bright, vibrant gold. And then other times I mixed it in my inner corner with a lighter golden kind of highlight shade um, or even something a little bit more peachy just to kind of tone it down. I've worn it all over my lower lash line as a really like bold kind of look there. I've been loving integrating it into looks and it has been so fun and I'm really happy to see another pan happen in this palette. The other one is so tiny that I don't even think you'll see it there, but in the shade Millie. And yeah, this is definitely a palette I'd like to improve the number of pans within in the immediate future. So I'm hoping that I do roll this into this project again for another focus shadow, but for now, we're gonna be saying goodbye to it from this project pan, which is so exciting. So I think now you see why I was so excited to share this update. Three freaking pans, but we still have two additional shadows to talk about, which are both from my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. The first one being the shade Royal, which is a beautiful, rich, jewel tone kind of green shade. And it's a matte formula, but it's got like a creamy kind of texture to it. And then the other one is Orium, which is a kind of slightly red, red brown to green gold duochrome shadow. It has a base pigment that's very warm and rich with a kind of top pigment, I suppose you could call it. That doesn't sound official whatsoever, but like the shimmer particles on top are these beautiful shifty greens and golds and it's such a beautiful shadow. I did hand select this shade to focus on for this project pan, and I'm very happy that I did decide to roll in two shadows from my Metropolis palette because this palette, this palette is one that truly I'm so happy to have in my collection, so happy to have in my life. I debated picking it up and I w wanted it, like I lusted after it for so, so long, and then I purchased it in, I guess it would have been October or November of 2020. And I have not looked back since. I'm so happy that after looking at it for, I, I kid you not, it was like a year that I was deliberating on picking this up, but I'm so happy I decided to do that. And in fact, it occurred to me only this past month that this was my last eyeshadow palette purchase. I have not bought myself an eyeshadow palette since this one. 
I have brought three other ones into my collection. Two were through PR early last summer, and then one was a, uh, not a birthday gift, a Christmas gift from my boyfriend at the very tail end of last year. But I have felt no compulsion at all to bring any new eyeshadows into my collection, and I really do think it's in part because of this gorgeous palette. That is so 0% the point of today's video, but that is something that I did find kind of interesting and I thought I'd share with you. But anyways, let's talk about both of the shades that I have rolled in from this palette specifically. So the shade Royal is one that I've now reached for seven times through this project and then Orium I have reached for six times in this project. So pretty even usage on both of those shades. They are ones that I feel like I've made really great progress on, but I don't believe I'm anywhere near pan on these. So this is Royal right here. There is definitely a dip because I have used this as a liner several times. So I'm going in with a very small, precise brush in order to pick up um, product to kind of use it as like a gel liner. That creamy consistency really does lend well to applying it as a liner. And then Orium is kind of like all over the surface, has some wear, there's no, really apparent dip like there's usage for sure but it's not a very apparent dip because I just smother my finger in this shade and just slap it on everywhere I freaking love the look of Orium but I will say I do get some issues with fallout from Orium for sure it just always is gonna have fallout no matter how I try to apply it with a brush with a finger with glitter glue with a setting spray whatever I find I always get fallout but I know to expect it so it's totally fine I did also use Orium as a nail polish this past month on top of actually this, this exact shade, this deep brown color, and I loved it. It was so beautiful, very soft, but really gorgeous. Again, I just lean into the greens. I love greens, so if they're on my nails, on my eyelids, wherever, I'm into it, and I've been adoring reaching for this palette so much. I've noticed that I have been able to make more dips in this palette through reaching for it this past month as more of a focus. Like this shade right here, um, Chrism, I believe it's called. It's looking really loved. And this palette as a whole just looks like an absolute disaster in the best possible way. So I am really happy with the status of this. I imagine this will take me several more months to hit pan on either of those shadows. But believe me, I'm gonna have a freaking blast as I reach for them, no matter what. Once I hit pan on Orium, I will be able to select a new hand-picked shadow, but not until I hit pan on it. And I am not going to allow the hand-picked shadows to fall within the 15 use threshold I've decided actually to. Just for that added bit of challenge, I have to hit pan on the ones that I select for myself. Is that a bad idea? I don't know. but. That's the way I'm going to interpret it. So I'm gonna be selecting three new shadows. I have actually put all my eyeshadows back into the Tiny Decisions app instead of Pretty Random because I kind of think it's fun to see the names of the shadows together. Now, I do have a couple things I want to keep in mind as I select these shadows. The first thing being that if I were to get a duplicate or very comparable shade, I am gonna skip past it and I'm gonna select something else in its place. And then also, this is a suggestion that I had last year and I thought it was such a great idea and I've never really like brought it into practice. But if I select a black eyeshadow, I'm not feeling like I'm ready or willing to work on a black eyeshadow at the moment, so what is gonna happen is I will actually randomize a new shadow from that palette in order to continue to reach for that black shadow. Like I'll try to integrate it into as many looks alongside the other shade, but that way I'm not like totally fixated on a black eyeshadow just because I know I'm not gonna be able to hit pan on one. But that way I'll get some usage out of it, you know? Anyways, let's select the three new shadows coming into this project, all right? So the first one, I don't know why I feel kind of nervous, <laughs> is gonna be from the ColourPop Pretty Much palette. It's the shade It Me. And then the next one is going to be from my Melt Smoke Sessions palette. I don't entirely remember which one's Sweet Tooth, but I'm, I'm pretty stoked on that one. I love that palette. We all know I love that palette so, so much. And then lastly, ooh, shadow number three. 
Typical. It's from Urban Decay Born to Run. It's a shade Blaze. I think that's like a warm metallic neutral kind of shade. So I'll be right back to share with you all the new roll-ins. Alrighty, so the first shade that I randomized was ColourPop It Me, which came from the Pretty Much palette. It was a like little six pan palette, but I have depotted all of my ColourPop shadows into this C palette right here. And the shade It Me is this one right here. It's kind of like a cool toned, taupey metallic shade. This is what it looks like. It's a very soft color. Um, and actually this formula, ooh, that does not seem to be doing much of anything. That's the swatch there. Let me try to build it up a bit. It does not want to really adhere to my skin, but my hands are so dry, so maybe that's just like not doing it any favors. Doesn't look like much happening on the hand, however, it may perform really well with a glitter glue underneath of it. It may apply a lot better just as I apply it with my hands onto my lids themselves because they do have, you know, that little bit more oil to them. Um, not a ton of usage happening on this yet. In fact, it has a tiny bit of a dip, but not a ton of wear. So this is something that's going to take me quite a bit of effort. Thankfully, when it comes to ColourPop um, metallics, they do go a little bit faster. And this does look like one that I'm going to have to build up pretty significantly to get the impact that I want. But these little pans are small but mighty. They take a long time to hit pan on. So I am excited and also slightly terrified to see how this goes. But it's a good neutral kind of shade that I think I can wear with a wide variety of different looks. I think it actually will pair very nicely with both the green and the purple. It can kind of go both directions and I think that that is great and I am looking forward to getting to know the formula a little bit better seeing as I've had it for several years at this point. And then the next shade is one from my Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette that is so always such a tongue twister and I feel like I have to say it a lot but <laughs> anyways. The shade is called Sweet Tooth and I don't remember which shade that is. Should we try to guess or am I gonna fail? I kind of feel like it is like the minty color on this end, but I could be entirely wrong. Ooh, it is, okay. Like a minty, tealy kind of color. I freaking love this color and oh my God, it's gonna look so good with that green. I'm really excited for this. So this is what it looks like, such a beaut. This formula is unbelievable. It's so, so rich, so pigmented and metallic, and it's so, so stunning. It can be a little bit of a nuisance sometimes to apply, not gonna lie. I do find it can be, you know, a little bit more challenging, but just looking at it alongside the other shades that I'm working on, I am so excited. I'm so excited. I love this freaking palette so much. It does have a decent sized dip already happening in it because I love this color and I love this palette. I used it quite a lot when I was working on the shade Blue Dream from this palette in this project in the past, but I'm so looking forward to using this more. This, this is heavenly. This is so exciting for me. It looks so good with all those shades. Like I can just imagine this color, this color, this color all in one look and just being so bright and vibrant and beautiful. And then the last shade is going to be from my Urban Decay Born to Run palette. This palette loves this project as to be expected because there's so many shades in this freaking palette. But I think Blaze is going to throw off the color story. It's going to be a little bit out of place um, in comparison. Actually, I'm not sure. It might actually look really nice with Orium. Honestly, I might even have in my head a completely different shadow than what is in here. So why don't we open it up and take a look at what Blaze actually is. Where are you? Yeah, no, it's not what I was expecting. <laughs> this is Blaze right here. It's kind of like a soft kind of peach shade. Look at that there. It's not quite a gold. It's like a sand color, but with a metallic finish. And it's got like a slightly pearly pink kind of shift to it. Okay, it's not what I thought. I, in my head, I think I was thinking of Accelerate or possibly Double Life as being Blaze. So Blaze is entirely different than I was anticipating. It's gonna be a good shade to probably wear as a highlight kind of color, possibly on the inner corner. It might be a little bit too pigmented for that on my personal coloring, 
but I'll definitely be playing around with it. As you can see, my Born to Run palette has many pans in it, so I know I can do it. I know I'm up for the challenge, but it will take me some time given that I've had, you know, some experiences with this palette where it has taken me quite a lot of use to hit pan on the focus shades, but that's okay. I think this will be a good shade to integrate into a wide variety of looks. In fact, now that I know which shade is actually Blaze, it goes perfectly well with everything else that I'm focusing on. In fact, this is quite a cohesive, fun, early sp spring, like moving into early spring kind of color story. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. Great for the month of March as I really am just wanting like this freshness. I'm thinking about my summer gardens. I'm thinking about fresh produce and all seeing all the leaves come out off of the trees. And so I'm just feeling really inspired by these kinds of fresh, earthy, green colors and this color story is just giving it to me. So this is amazing. I'm really excited for what this next month has in store. I think it may be a possibility that I have one singular pan next month. I could have pan in Makita, the purple here, but otherwise, I don't know that I'll have pan on anything, but only time will tell. We shall see what the next month has in store. Either way, I'm really excited to reach for all these shadows. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me. I'm sorry I was all over the place today, but I'm in a funny mood, I suppose. I'm just really, really loving this project yet again. But yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. <laughs>